maybe you can tell me, uh, well, I'm curious as to the, when you re realized that this was going to be a double album, it was going to grow into this thing that it turned into. Well, well what, it, what, what happened is that during lockdown, I, I kind of spent quite a lot of time trying to fill the empty hours, you know. I'm right. on a record shop and I spent a lot of time cataloging records and putting them in alphabetical order and all that kind of nonsense. I understand that completely. <laughs> then I did my own records and put them in alphabetical order and did all that kind of stuff. And then I was also writing a lot of songs, you know, just sitting down with the guitar, writing a song here and there and recording them on the phone. And, <clears throat> and uh, I had a load of material and I thought, yeah, this is kind of good enough for a record. Right. So I've got, a, I've got a mate who lives down the road with a small recording studio and it, the, the room, the live room is separate from the control room. So I could just go into the live room and use it on my own. It's got all the kind of drums and amps and stuff in there. So I just kind of went in and initially I was thinking I'd just do demos to give to the guys in the band when we could go back in the studio again right. and then we'd record a new album. And I did about, I suppose about five or six tracks and I gave them to Aid, who's my bass player, yep. and Paul, who's the guitarist. And I said, well, look, have a listen to these and maybe we can sort these out. And they both came back and said, well, we don't need to because they sound fine already. <laughs> gotcha. And I, kind of thought, and I kind of thought, well, yeah. Well, why spend more money doing it when I've already done it, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I continued laying down the tracks of all the songs I've written just so that I'd have them at hand. And I'd, I'd done something like about, I must have done about 30 tracks or something like that. <laughs> maybe 32, something like that. And then right. I listened to it and I was kind of saying, well, that one's not so good and that one's a definite and that one. And in the end, I kind of had about 20 tracks that I really liked. And so right. it became a double album. Really. There you go. Easy That's as it. that. <laughs> That's it. Very so was, was there anything that inspired all this writing? No, not really. I, I kind of uh, write stuff all the time, really. I'm, I, I spend a lot of time just sitting with a guitar, strumming away, singing gibberish, really, just having a little tune. And, right, right, and, right. Uh, you, you know, sometimes nothing happens. Sometimes I get a few words that I think, oh, yeah, that's good. And you kind of build it from there. <clears throat> and sometimes it works. Most times nothing happens. And, uh, you know, because there was, I had a bit more time on my hands during lockdown, I kind of uh, was able to write more stuff than usual. Right. And so, yeah, so I had quite a lot of stuff that I was reasonably happy with. Mostly, if I write a song, I listen to it a few times just on an acoustic. And if it, if it sounds all right, then I might go on and do a demo of it. But mostly, I just kind of end up throwing them in the bin because you kind of go, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, of course, the one of the things you, you tend to do is you write a song, you think it's really good, and when you listen back to it, you realise it's someone else's song and you've written it again. Oh, know? dear. <laughs> I, 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 I was like, wait a minute, that sounds just like... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Forget that one, you know? <clears throat> but, you know, I usually come up with enough stuff, but I don't really worry about it. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, I always feel like, well, if it comes, it comes, and if it doesn't, then we'll have a longer wait for an album, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. So what were the circumstances... Were you pretty much alone making these tracks or did you have, yeah, you're on your own. Do you like working? Yeah. You obviously working like working like that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's okay. I quite like doing it, but it was more to do with lockdown really. You know, um, right. I could I couldn't get in a studio with the band at the time. And so I did it on my own. And uh, oh. I mean, I, you know, I was a bit concerned that my drumming isn't quite up to par, but it's <laughs> You know, it sounded most of the time I was listening to it and thinking, whoa, actually, that sounds almost like a proper drummer, you know? Gotcha. And there was one track on the album called As I Lay Down to Die, where I did the drumming on it and listened back to it, and it it just didn't sound very good. It sounded like someone pushing a cupboard down a staircase, you know, and I thought, right. that's, <laughs> that's, that's really not, not good. So I actually asked a friend who lived right. down the road, a guy called Yan Kincaid, who was the drummer of the brand new heavies. Right. I happen to know. And so he came in and did the drums on that track. But really, apart from that, and a couple of little bits of keyboard that the, the guy who owns the studio and engineered it uh, said, oh, this sounds good. But 
it was all me apart from one track on the drums and a couple of bits of keyboard. Good. Well, um, uh, since you mentioned As I Lay Down to Die, to me, it seemed like the centerpiece of the album. It kind of comes in as track 10 out of 20, and it's about <laughs> seven minutes long. It's kind of slow, yeah. and it's got this organ stuff. And so was that what you were thinking when you made it, or why you put it where it is in the album? As I lay down to die, I heard the voices of childhood friends. They were talking in the sky of new beginnings. When we hold ends. I think I, I'm probably being a bit of an old git. Um, <laughs> I always... I always feel that the long track should be the last one at the end, you know, the album. I think that's traditional. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. You know, when you had a kind of psychedelic album, you know, back in the 60s or early 70s, the, the long track used to usually be at the end of an album. And it's kind of ingrained that if you do a, if I do an eight minute track, that should be at the end of an album. Yep. So the two two longest tracks end so LP1 and LP2, really, because I'm, uh, I, I wasn't, I mean, it's sequenced quite nicely as well. It kind of, I was putting it together with all the tracks and there's, you know, I wanted to have them. A, a, so when, it, when you're putting the sequence together, they're not all in the same key and then one's a bit faster and one's a bit slower and, you know, and it kind of fitted quite nicely where it came. So, yeah, it kind of just fell into place, really. I wasn't really thinking in terms of this track is definitely going to be the last one, but okay. well, it did just work out that way, really. And, and uh, as I laid down to die, seems to be kind of about mortality and, out of body experience and death and stuff is yeah. is, is that something well, you're on your mind well death well you know i suppose when you when you get to my age death does loom rather large you know um it's <laughs> it's it's more prevalent than it was you know i mean it's something that affects everyone isn't it and i find it a little bit more uh truthful to write about impending death than getting off with some girl and or tracking, <laughs> or tracking down the highway because I'm not going to do either of those things, you know? A, that's a different kind of death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was, that. yeah, it's, it, um, I was kind of really thinking with that. Um, yeah, it's got a, a few, it, 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 I suppose it was about people dying rather than me dying. Right. <clears throat> and it was, uh, you know, looking around you uh, various, I don't, I don't really know, it's a bit abstract, I suppose, because I like to try and get meaning into the lyrics, you know. And yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want the lyrics to be dull or kind right. of... Well, I, it's interesting because, I mean, the sound that you make is very loud. There's a lot of guitar and it's kind of easy to lose the lyric in, in the middle of all that. So is that something you think about when you're making the record? Yeah, yeah, it is. <clears throat> you know, the kind of my kind of view has always been that I think. Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. Here. That's all right. <clears> throat> uh, yeah, I mean, the thing that I've always thought about is that that's, that what, what the Bevis from. I mean, I'm, I sound terribly pretentious here, but what <laughs> that, that I'm a kind of pretty decent guitarist. Right. But <laughs> Fair I, enough. There's a lot. There's a lot of good guitarists around, and I, I kind of think that the real key to it really is that the material is is kind of good and I, I do take a lot of trouble about the way I write the songs and the way they put together and the lyrical content you know and I think if you're a songwriter lyrics is half of it yeah isn't it? you know yep. a, a song with no lyrics is an instrumental that's true <laughs> I can't argue I, with I, that you know but, but so you know so it's important you know it's as important as the music that, that you have, and I don't want to write nonsense lyrics and I don't want to write right. stuff about, you know, I'm in love or I'm, you know, I'm going out partying or stuff like that because it, it's just, A, it's all been done before, it's a bit dull and it's ridiculous coming from a 68-year-old, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. So, so you have a, another song called Cherry Gardens, which is just after it on the record, which is kind of apparently about the kind of decline of the English traditional way of living. Is that something you think about much? I 
live in England and I'm not happy with the way things are, really, I suppose. Okay. Um, I, I'm not a fan of the government, to put it mildly. Right. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think with Cherry Gardens was more uh, supposed to be a bit more kind of like poppy, really. It was a, a kind of poppy song talking about, you know, a relationship with someone's gone way back that someone might have gone a bit bonkers and... and you know, which is maybe symptomatic of the way things have gone, I suppose. But, uh, right. but yeah, I, I wasn't really thinking about the decline of the, of the British way of life in that one so much as uh, more on a more of a kind of relationship thing from your memory or something like that. But gotcha. yeah, I suppose it all ties in, doesn't it? Because you know, things going wrong, whether it's personal or general, it, it's kind of about that, I suppose. Right. So, so what does it feel like over there in England at the moment? I, I don't know, really. Um, I know what I feel like. And, and well, that's what, what I'm interested like. in. What do you feel like? Well, I'm, I'm mightily pissed off, you know, with... I'm, I'm totally um, pissed off about Brexit. I mean, I think that's an absolutely insane thing. I think yep. it's, in my lifetime, I can't think of a more stupid British idea. You know, it, yep. it's, to my mind, it was a kind of uh, the government pandering... To, to people who really shouldn't be pandered to, <laughs> but maybe that's not something you want to say, you know. I mean, I don't agree with it. I, I think we've shot ourselves in the foot, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it long seems long. like it's going to have a huge effect on bands yeah. trying to tour around Europe and stuff and coming out of England. I mean, I mean I do, nothing I do else. Of, I do a lot of work in Europe, and for the time being, that's out of the question. Right. You know, it seems ridiculous because it, when Brexit was being touted, uh, they were saying, oh, we're going to make moves to, to help bands and music and arts and all that stuff. They've done absolutely nothing at all. And all that's going to happen is for people like me who aren't massive, right? even, you know, just kind of cultish type small band, it's going to be prohibitive. You know, we're not going to be able to afford to do it really because yep. it's hard enough as it is, you know, to, to do a tour and cover your costs. Because I yep. don't get any, I don't get tour support from the label, you know. Right. Um, yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm gonna, you know, you you pretty much rely on doing a bit of merchandising on tour, and you know, of course, now we're gonna have to pay tax on everything we earn. Yeah. And you know, and it, there's all kind of ridiculous draconian rules, and of course, it just makes it a kind of non-starter, really. And we, unless you're prepared to go out and do three weeks work in Europe and come back in debt, it's a, it's a non-starter, really. Yeah. So I, I can't see, and for the time being, I mean, I, I feel pretty sure that eventually something more sensible will be worked out because right. it has to be, really, you know. So as a recording artist and a touring artist, does that affect how you approach, how you want to do what you do? Well, as a as a recording artist, no, not really. But as a touring live act, yes, yeah, completely. Man, yeah. Okay, now another track I wanted to touch on was "Do Without Me," which yeah. kind of, <laughs> it seems you know you're kind of addressing all sorts of things in there. So maybe you, you can tell me what you're touching on with that one. Question about my attitude Stick your pointless feud You can do without me can do without me can do without me do without me I was, I was, what, what I was, I was kind of, one of my things that I do when I write a song, which is, is I, I don't usually write a, just about one thing. Right. I try and I try and cover a few bases in the space of three verses or something. You know, I don't want to just write that's about that. You know, so so in that one, I, it, that was more to do with the kind of decline of the way of life. You know, ah, there you go. <laughs> I was writing about how you know shopping and you know derelict shopping malls and security guards, and then in the next verse, it was uh, the decline of transport. You know, and the in 1963, when Dr. Beeching closed down all the railways and now right. you hours in traffic jams. And then the last one was kind of advertising on TV. And 
I was kind of covering all the things that I was kind of pissed off about, really. And, and saying you could do without me was kind of also really partly saying I would, would be withdrawing from that, but also saying that my point of view and where I stand is, is pretty irrelevant. So it was a kind of catch-all gripe, really. Okay. Now, another track that I wanted to touch on was They Will Return, which... Yeah. It remi- I, I got to say, it reminded me of like an almost an answer song to the Kinks' Where Have All the Good Times Gone? Do you know that song? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Did it, did, yeah, am uh, I... That didn't occur to me that at all. You see him in his corner He says it's all turned out wrong And it's just not like the old days and all the good times have gone. I mean, what, they will return. It was basically trying. I was kind of thinking quite positively, really. You know. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Was, yeah, because I was kind of saying, you know, that that you've got all these, you know, people maybe of my age, maybe a bit older, who griping about, oh, you know, nothing sounds good or hip hop's rubbish, and sitting in the pub moaning about stuff. And I was saying, well, you know. What's what you don't like? Your time's passed, pal. You know, right? And good things will happen again, but maybe not for you. You know, yeah. And then, uh, and then it was kind of I was trying to think of they will return as applied to different. It's another one of my three verse, three different subjects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the second one was about your your kind of family ties. You know, with again taken from the view of someone getting on a bit you know, where your family leaves home and they've got their own lives to leave and you're a bit pissed off because they don't get in touch with you. Although my daughter, I have to say, is in touch with us almost every day, which is lovely, you know. But yep. generally, I know people whose kids don't get in touch with them. And sure. it's quite a tension. But then you think, well, you know, once again, they've, they've got their lives to lead. And, you know, whatever your gripe is, you know, you still kind of, like when they come back, you know, you're still kind of delighted and, you know, and, and the they will return at the end of that was was maybe not they, they'll move home again, but, you know, in, on the contrary, you'll probably end up moving close to them in your declining years, you know, but yeah. then your relationship returns. And then the other one was a kind of supposed to be kind of funny about myself getting old. And I'm saying, you know, that I'm still out. Uh, I'm still out being, I'm kind of considered, it's weird, you know, we do gigs in, in around Europe or wherever in America and stuff. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not the oldest person in the band, you know. Right, I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> you know, and uh, we, we play gigs and we're probably older than most of our b- colleagues, you know, other bands on a gig. We're, we're older than their parents, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We're still kind of somehow, much to, as I said, much to my amazement, um, we're not seen as a bunch of old retro idiots, you know, because yep. we've still... I suppose that's because we never made it. You yeah. know, if, we, if we'd have been successful, we'd be seen as an old bunch of twits, you know, but now, because we never were successful, we're still an up-and-coming band. <laughs> after we started, you know, but yeah. we're kind of, we're kind of still seen as kind of reasonably relevant, I suppose, you know, in a kind of underground sort of way. And right. uh, basically that was saying, bloody hell, you know, this is good, you know, and I'm still out they're able to have people listen to what I do. And, you know, all that means the pains I get in my back or my knees when I play football, you know, they don't seem to hurt as much, but they, they will return with the kind of sooner or later I'm going to be going, oh. Uh, yeah, yeah so I hear you. The idea was a bit of a kind of dry, self-deprecating bit of humour in that, which doesn't always come across. Right. You know, but that must be funny. But, but a lot of the things that I say that I think are funny, when you actually hear them, they just sound depressing. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm glad you addressed the issue of aging because I mean we're all doing that, obviously, and there's no the alternative is even worse. So you know, um, how does that? Are you thinking about that when you're thinking about creating music and what the band is going to do next and what you want to do next? What, what, am I thinking about what? Sorry. About the fact that you're not getting any younger, that you're 68 years oh, old. Constant situation, isn't it? You know, I think I think 
I mean, I think when you get over 60, you know, you know, you know that it's nothing's going to get better. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know, I think you got to think, well, I might stay where I am for a while and that'll do, but I'm certainly not going to get healthier and I'm not right. going to get more. You know, it, it's it's a fact. I'm okay with it. You right. know, I've got this. I'm, you know, I was out playing football last night. I'm still Oh, reasonable. good on you. Yeah, after a fashion. No, I did score a really good goal. But, uh, there you go. <laughs> but, you know, and I'm playing again on Thursday and I'm in a tournament on Sunday. So, you know, I'd still put it around a bit, you know, in a kind of pretty old git kind of staggering sort of way. But, you know, it, it, it's an inevitability, you know. I mean, a, a lot. you know, obviously I'm not looking forward to getting ill and dying, you know. But, but nope, it's not, nobody is. <laughs> no, it's not such a kind of horror as it was maybe 20 years ago, you know, when or yeah. 30 years ago when it sent a chill through your body, you know. Now I'm Absolutely. Going, yep. You know, and I can deal with it. And it, it doesn't occupy my every waking moment, you know. But then, uh, you know, you have your moments when of reflection when you suddenly think, Jesus Christ, I'm going to be 70 in 18 months' time. How how the fuck did that happen? You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> um, but so so what does it feel like when you're on stage with the band and you're rocking out, you're playing guitar and you're going, well, what the heck? I feel like I'm a 16 year old. I don't I don't think about it when I'm on stage. It's, I'll tell you what, I've, I always put a kind of I'm, because I'm a big football fan. Yeah. I always have a football analogy to go with whatever happens. I could say, well, it's like, and to me, when I play a game of football, whether it's five aside or I don't play 11 aside anymore, I just can't do it. But, <laughs> when I'm playing, you know, for whatever time you're playing, say an hour and 20 minutes, I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm just thinking about running about, kicking the ball, passing it, that kind of stuff. Yep. When I'm on stage playing, I'm not thinking about other, anything. I'm just trying to remember the words, make sure I don't play the wrong chords. Right. You know, doing the best I can, thinking about what's coming next. Jesus Christ, I can't remember what I'm supposed to be doing, making sure your drummer stops at the right moment, which this yep. drummer does. But, you know, just just my mind is just um, on the, the gig at hand. You know, I'm not drifting off and thinking about impending death or something. You know? Gotcha. Well, that's good. And, and what about your interactions with the fans, like before and after the show? Has that changed at all over the years? No, not at all. I, I've always been, you know, very grateful because I, I've spent most of my career putting up my own records and selling yeah. them, doing everything myself because I've never had management and I've rarely had a record label behind me. Um, I've always relied on a good relationship with your fans, you know, and I'm incredibly grateful for their patronage, you know, because yeah. without them, I wouldn't have a career, you know, and... Um, you know, I don't rely on a record label or anything. You know, I rely on doing stuff that that people, uh, albeit a small amount of them, but enough to make it that I've been able to have a, a career in music for the yep. last 35 years, you know, which is, and it's ongoing. And so my, you know, I've always made myself available at gigs, you know, I'll always talk to people and be friendly and, you know, I'll answer every person who gets in touch with me. You know, I used to write letters back to them now i email them back that's but, easier <laughs> that's me being dragged screaming into the 90s you know but um there you go um, but uh, not my 90s the, the, the <laughs> fair 90s. enough <laughs> and, um, so so are yeah. you gigging or because here in new zealand we're all kind of locked down at the moment but um, there are gigs going on in britain but at the moment i don't really feel very comfortable about it right um, and all, um adrian who's my good old mate who we've been very good mates for 40 years uh, or thereabouts um, maybe not quite that long mid mid 80s we've been mates and worked together very well all the way through he's having uh, a few issues at the moment so it, if we do gig in the next year I guess it, it would have to be without aid right but, you know, which is ongoing uh, at the moment because it's not not him he's fine but his wife's not well gotcha he, yeah he's got kind of more or less becoming a carer. For yep, yep, yep. Well, we've got to take care of each other. That's It's very important. So that's a that's another problem. We do have a, a guy lined up if there's gigs that turn up that seem that we should do them. But at the moment, I've had a few offers of gigs, but not, nothing particularly kind of, I've got to do that one, you know. Yep, yep. 
So with 20 songs kind of put out there all of a sudden after, are, are, are you thinking about more or are you thinking about less? I'm, I'm not thinking about anything. It, it's just, <laughs> you can't, you, you never plan albums, do you? You know, you just, you write, I write songs. If I get a batch of songs that I think are good enough for an album, I'll do an album. If I don't, I won't. Right. So you know, if I don't write any good songs for the next 10 years, I won't do any more albums for 10 years, you know? Yeah. But if I write the great ones in the next year, I'll probably do another album. And I, who knows, you know? So what do you if think I, when you hear when you hear yourself back at this time, you're 68 years old, you're cranking out your guitar, you're you're rocking out. I mean, does it seem like a is that what you thought of when 30 years ago when you started doing this 40 years ago? I hope so. Yep. I hope to, I don't see myself ever stopping playing guitars or writing songs, but whether anyone's going to be interested, I don't know. <laughs> You know, I mean, I had a seven-year sabbatical in, in the early 2000s. I did a, a tour of Europe and I put an album out. I came home, it was about 2004. Right. And put my guitar down and just said to my wife, right, I've had enough. I'm bored with it. It's We're playing the same venues to the same people. I'm writing the same song over and over again, yep. doing the same. It, I need to refresh it, you know. And I thought I'd have a year or two off and it lasted seven years and I didn't do a gig or make an album for seven years. And that when I started again in 2011, I, would, I didn't know whether anyone would be interested. You know, I, I kind of had to have a word with my wife and say, look, do you mind if I try? Because it's going to cost a bit of money to do an album and it might be a waste of time and money because no right. one, you know, yep. see one. And I thought we got rid of him, you know, but he's back again. Right. And, it went down pretty well and I've continued since then, you know, but yeah, I've, I've got no, no idea what will happen. You know, it, I, every time I put an album out, I'm always, I always have in the back of my mind that it's going to be the one that people go, Oh, fuck off. Yeah. yeah. Of <laughs> but, Hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but it, it will, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe I'll die before it happens. You know, there you go. I, I can hear Pete Townsend's words ringing in my ears at this point. <laughs> I die before I get old. That. Yeah. <laughs> you like? I fucked that one up. Uh, fair enough. All right. Well, well. Thank you very much for sharing this all with me. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, just keep rocking. You know, just. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep on writing songs and I'll keep on playing guitar. But whether or not they ever come out on record or not is, I don't do it for that. I right. never have. I've, I've done it because I really like it. And once again, using a football analogy. I've always played football until I can't do it anymore. I'll play football, you know, until I'm physically unable. I got gotcha. you. The, the reason I do it is because I enjoy it. And I don't expect anyone to watch me play football because I'm <laughs> shit. <laughs> you gotcha. I just happen to be a much better musician than a footballer, but I do it. For, I do music on the same basis. I do it because I, I write songs and I play the guitar because I like doing it. Yep. Putting out doing gigs is a byproduct of it. And I could live without it. I couldn't live without playing the guitar and writing songs, but I could live without the rest of it, you know? Yeah. But, yep. but people, you know, I'm glad that it has happened, but if it stopped, I'll, it, I'd still go on writing songs and singing and playing guitar. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for taking time to talk to me about it. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, Marty.